Hi, in today's video I'll be showing you my solution to the challenge I launched on Twitter earlier, namely coding this tooltip with a little arrow with a gradient background with rounded corners using a single HTML element, no pseudo elements on it, no JS, no SVG, no images in general save for CSS gradients and at most five of them, including the one on the body, uh, you see those uh, stripes there in the back, that's the gradient on the body, and also no long, long list of values. And by that I mean can't have clip path uh, polygon with a long list of point coordinates inside the polygon function. Also, I'll be trying to do this with about 15 CSS declarations. So let's get started. We start with a layout on the body. So that's going to be display grid. Um, we're going to set place content center. And then we're going to set a background, which is going to be not black, but a repeating linear gradient at 90 degrees. And uh, it's going to be a light gray from 0 to 2 pixels. And then it's going to be a white all the way up to 7 pixels. And in case you're wondering why the two values, uh, it's uh, because of the double position syntax, which I wrote about in this article, which you can check out. But now let's return to coding this. So uh, tooltip. On this, we're first going to bump up the font size because uh, it's really small at this point. So um, let's bump up uh, the line height as well. Um, monospace should do it for now. Okay. Now let's give it a background. That's going to be just uh, a linear gradient. Let's say at 70 degrees, it's going to use that color list make it use uh, twice. Okay, now the contrast is really bad, so let's fix that. Okay. Okay, what the heck am I? Uh, never mind. Uh, so having done this, let's set the padding. So um, 0.5 amps. That should do it. And we only set this horizontally. We don't set it vertically. Vertically, it's still going to be zero, but we want it horizontally. Now let's set a corner rounding. So a corner radius, let's say nine pixels and an arrow height, which I don't know, 0.5 amps. You can tweak these values later. Okay, so now we're going to set a border, which is going to be solid, that arrow height for the width. And um, let's use RGBA white and an alpha of 0.5. Okay, now something you can see here is that uh, the background repeats outside the padding box. And this is because um, background origin is by default padding box. And uh, the background size is relative to the box specified by the background origin. So let's make that border box. Okay. Uh, by the way, I wrote an article on that. So background clip use cases or something like that. Yep, this one. And again, I'll link it in the description. You can check it out. And it explains this whole concept in detail of uh, boxes. And if you see border box, padding box here, it's all explained in that article. You can check with it later. Okay, so having done this, now I'm going to set a border radius and this is going to be calc um, and it's going to add up that uh, radius and the arrow height, which is also the border width. So, um, okay, I've done this, good. So now we have that rounding on the padding box. Next, I want to show you something about masking. So we're going to use a linear gradient mask from red to transparent. And now uh, I want to tell you that um, for masking, only the alpha channel matters. So uh, there can be anything else for the red, green and blue. It doesn't matter. So whatever we have for those, it never matters. I'm using red there because it's just three characters and there are two named colors with only three characters. So I'm using red, but you can use blue or magenta or whatever. It doesn't matter. You can 
use anything else that has an alpha of one. So how does masking work? It's like we're overlaying the linear gradient that makes up the mask over the element. And for each pixel uh, of the element, uh, we set its alpha to the corresponding mask pixel. So here at the top, the mask pixels have an alpha of one. They're fully opaque because we have red. So that's fully opaque. The element keeps uh, its alpha of one. Now here at the bottom, the mask pixels have an alpha of zero, which makes the element have an alpha of zero there. So this is basically how masking works. And we don't necessarily need to use a linear gradient. We can use a conic gradient. The thing is, this doesn't work in Firefox unless you enable a flag. So we're going to do that just now. So we're doing this and we're looking for conic. OK, so having done this, we double click it and we switch it to true. And now we go back here, make sure we've saved stuff and refresh and it should work now. OK, it works. Great, but this is not quite, quite what we want. So um, we're going to uh, set an angular opening for the arrow. And this is how open the arrow is. I'll show you in a moment just exactly what this controls. And this is going to start from uh, minus half. So minus half this angular opening. And it's going to be from zero to uh, the same angular opening. OK. And then here, it's just uh, going to be 0%. OK, but uh, we don't want it like that. We want it at 50%, so in the middle horizontally, 100% vertically. So that's going to be at the bottom. And um, Wait, uh, not there. So here, we're going to add another gradient, which is going to be a linear gradient, uh, red to red. So this is going to be fully opaque. But this is going to be limited to the padding box. So padding box. Whereas this one is going to be border box. OK, so um, having done this, We want to also position this at the bottom because we don't want it. Uh, we don't want it to get all the way up there, and we're going to give it a background size which is going to be fifty percent, fifty percent, and we're also going to set no repeat, so no repeat on it. And as you can see, we're starting to get something here. Let's make this fully transparent. This uh, border color. Okay. And as you can see, this is starting to look like something. Uh, and now I said I'd show you what this does. So if I have it like this, uh, the angular opening of that arrow is going to be bigger and it can be a lot smaller, like 40 degrees. So yeah, let's go back to the 70 degrees, which I think looks pretty good. OK, so having done this, the next uh, step would be to round that uh, tip of the arrow. Now for that, we need to subtract everything that's uh, below the circle that touches the edges of the arrow. So let me show you that. It's just, you know, the beak figure. I don't know if uh, you're familiar with this from school, but <laughs> I don't know. We did this in elementary school. So yeah. So it's going to be a transform rotate um that's a bit above the horizontal right so we need to yeah i i don't know why it went up there oh not on the body that's that's just silly okay so um i need to add it here right so um just add it there okay Yep, this does it. Okay, so having done this, 
so this is what we have there don't hunt highlight it okay okay so this is what we have there um, and this is basically our arrow and this is the circle we put inside the uh, arrow and what's outside the circle that part which is outside the circle that part we want to mask out of our arrow so to do so we need to have a radial gradient and we create this uh, disk up to here and we know the radius and we also are going to need to know this offset from the center of the radius to the tip of the arrow. Now, in order to get this, we use the fact that this is a right triangle and we know this angle right here because it's half the angular opening. So um, this uh, distance right here is going to be the radius over the sinus of this little angle here. So um, in order to use sinus, we're going to need to import compass. So um, import compass okay okay and we get an error now this error is uh, because um, SAS and CSS features make light so um, I wrote an article about this and you can check it out uh, but the bottom line is SAS is case sensitive CSS isn't so what we can do is just replace gradient here so replace with a gradient with a, a capital letter and SAS isn't going to recognize this and is going to leave it alone and CSS is going to use it and it's all going to be fine okay having done this let's add that radial gradient right here so we're going to have a radial gradient and this um, the way we're going to create this um, thing right here, we're only going to use the lower half of the disk. This means that our background is going to have the top edge right here. So uh, the center of uh, this uh, radial gradient is going to be at the top in the middle. So um, it's going to be at 50% zero. Uh, and we're going to have transparent uh, red and we're going to have transparent uh, up to that radius and then red zero um, radial gradient of course it has a problem with that now this solves it and you can see that byte taken out of there and everything else gets covered okay that's not quite what we wanted so uh, what we want is to position this at the bottom so it's going to be 50% 100% right um, and we want to also limit its size so it's going to be twice that radius and vertically it's going to be that uh, offset we said we'd compute but we haven't yet so that offset between the center of the disk and the tip of the arrow so let's compute that offset right now so offset is the radius over sine of half that angular opening okay now we have the offset as well but it looks really weird because it's repeating so um, we don't want it to repeat oh so no repeat and also make it uh, oh actually it's um it's border box um okay so that looks good but we also want it to be a circle because uh, now it's an elves circle i wrote that wrong Okay, but the thing is, we don't simply add up the layers. We don't simply put them one on top of the other because it's not going to work. So what we need to do is use mass compositing. And I also wrote an article about that. So mask, mass compositing crash course. 
Yep, that's it. And here I explain in detail all the values and um, a few gotchas and how to make it work cross browser. And yeah, you can check it out. It's really detailed. Everything is going to be linked in the description. But now let's just get back to this and uh, let's set mask composite. And these two layers on top, they're going to be added up. So we're going to use add. But this one, the radial gradient one, we're just going to subtract it from uh, the two layers on top. So subtract. Okay, so we pretty much have the result. One thing I don't really like is the jagged edges. So in order to fix that, we're going to have an error here. So um, let's say one degree, angular error, and uh, we can get away with it uh, a lot simpler here because we, we're going to have um, that and here we're going to have calc, uh, the radius plus one pixel. Uh, and here it's going to be a bit more complex because we're going to use calc minus the error. Okay, and here we're going to have another transparent. So transparent and this red is going to go only up to the error. Um, and here is going to be calc the angular opening plus the error. Okay. And now you can see it's already smooth in this uh, side and at the bottom. We only have jagged edges there. So we're just going to take this and um, paste it right here and have twice the error. Okay. Now, um, okay. And align everything nicely and um, yeah this is pretty much it the only problem at this point is that webkit browsers don't support mask unprefixed so to fix this we're going to use a custom property and we're going to set mask and we're going to create another version of it so we're going to have webkit mask and yeah uh, the alignment gets messed up here for some reason oh well it is what it is and here again we're going to duplicate this okay and we're going to add the webkit prefix so um, add it right here the only problem is that um, mask compositing for WebKit is a bit different and needs different values. So add is source over, while subtract is source out. Yeah, not nowhere as intuitive as the standard version, but it is what it is. These are not supported in WebKit, the standard versions. So yeah, this is what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you like the work I've been putting out for the past eight years, more than eight years now already, please consider supporting it so I can continue doing this. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. There's going to be a link in the description or you can get me something off my Amazon wish list. The links are going to be in the description as well. Or you can at least share this to show the role what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time.